Yeah. You were saying you were, while you were working with the yeah, yeah. prison so, um, system. Because I look at it from a, from a, how should I put it? From a race perspective, I mean, I'm talking about from an Afrocentric perspective, we use this whole urban culture as a way to redeem, that's the best way to say it, redeem this consciousness and, 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 and kind of help heal the wounds. As um, Naeem, you see? This is exactly the point. Hey, one night. This is exactly what I'm saying. It's like, you see what's going on right now? Yeah. There's a match going on right now in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And everybody's everybody applauding. The whole country stopped to watch this. Mm. This match that go, it's going on. It's not even a local match. Mm -hmm. It does not involve local teams. Mm. This is actually teams playing in Portugal, mm. and everybody is involved around this thing. While we are dying, while we the are raping one another, stuck. while we are murdering one another, the consciousness, this race consciousness, is is dead. You see what I'm saying? And it's like this is the type of attitude that kind of kills this whole moment. When, when, when we are talking about these things, 99% of the people don't care about this. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, they're more concerned with, with the latest trend that's in style. They're more concerned with what goes on overseas and abroad than what goes on actually inside our own homeland. I'm talking about here in our country or even in our continental Africa. So it, it, it concerns me. It saddens me in a way when we are not teaching our kids knowledge itself mm. you know? so this brings us right back to what Brad Nobion was saying you see what I'm saying it's the five percent of knowledge so coming across all that consciousness the five percent of knowledge nation of Islam the Black Panthers mm -hmm. and you, you, you I actually learned I came across that knowledge from listening to hip-hop rap groups you see what I'm saying like you said I listened to Brad Nubian they were talking about Duda now, they're talking about supreme, supreme Mathematics, they're talking about Supreme Alphabet. And I'm like, what is this? And I start researching that shit. And I come across PRT, and they dropping Malcolm X consciousness. So I'm like, what is that? What are these guys talking about? What, what's PRT? Or Poor Righteous Teachers. Then I, then I started looking into that. So then, then the further I went, the dark, how should we say, I don't even want to say the clearer it became. Mm -hmm. This whole black consciousness kind of revealed itself. As, as a massive movement, and hip hop was at the forefront of this whole thing. So, I'm one of those that was raised within that consciousness. How, sh uh, how we say it is basically, hip hop shape, shape the way we, we think, it, it still does. It shaped the way we move, the way we talk, the way we behave, and, and a lot of times, even when you're tired, you don't wanna do things, you just wanna sit back and relax and take time for yourself. Something's telling you in the back of your mind, like, yo, you always got to keep doing this thing. You got to keep striving, like your ancestors. But a lot of times I think about my ancestors, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of these MCs, you see what I'm saying? Mm. I'm talking about these rap lyrics, because I think about the past. What's get, what, what exactly is getting me to think about the past is, are these lyrics. Mm. Even when I was addressing what, 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 what Chachi said, I started that whole thing with a quote from Common, you know, when he said, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to make millions, but more than money making, I want to save children. Mm. So I feel like a preacher mm -hmm. quoting the Bible, but I'm not quoting Bible. I'm quoting rap verses. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like the yep. common then becomes a prophet, mm -hmm. and I'm the preacher quoting these verses. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then I went right back to Pac, and Brenda's got a baby. So it's like, wow, I'm part of this ministry, this religion, as KRS said. You see what I'm saying? It's like, and I wish everybody could kind of vibe and feel that. So when you when they ask you like, what's your belief system? You have a religion, and you say, okay, my religion is this, is, is this thing that raised me, shaped me, and molded me. When my father wasn't around, you know what I mean. And, and Tupac was saying these things. I'm like, okay, maybe I can take this role model, and he becomes my father. Then I started learning about the, the whole fight of black people. You see what I'm saying? And they're talking about chattel slavery. Then I started learning about the whole. Um, chain gang, how black people were treated way back then, and then that brought me forward onto this this realm of what we live in right now, how we live in right now. And I'm talking about we have more black men now in jail than we had black people in slavery before the civil civil war. 
So I'm thinking, this is crazy, man, because that means we kind of took a step back in terms of race development. In, 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 in economic terms, when, uh, what's the brother's name? What's his name? Andrew, Andrew huh? Anderson. Claude Anderson. Claude Anderson. This brilliant economist. He said that prior to the Civil War, black people controlled more property that we control in America. Prior to the Civil War, black people control more wealth than we do today. A hundred, well, how many? How many? Three hundred. What, what, what? How many years are we talking after the Civil War? That that we still we still we still miserable. We still we still lack in this. this, this, this Conditions depression. are worse. Conditions yeah. are worse because it's like one. During slavery, people had skills. Yes. They were they were taught skills, and then after slavery, they said that white people were afraid of the competition, mm -hmm. so that they 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 blacklisted black people from learning skills. Before during slavery, black men were uh, uh, carpenters, blacksmiths, yes. all kind of skilled trades. And then yes. afterwards, there was more unemployment because there's competition. Yeah. And then the other thing is like, like you were saying, like economically, the economic power, like. They, they destroyed it. And then the bigger thing, too, is that, like, black people in America, mm -hmm. many people, like you were saying about this, like, they're more concerned with what's on American Idol, what's on, uh, what's on TV, uh, the football game, the basketball game, and then knowing, knowing what's going on. More concerned about buying the newest iPhone or the newest car or the newest Jordans or people wait in line, sleep overnight outside for Jordans, <clears throat> but won't go to vote. You seen this documentary? It's called Just for Kicks. No. Yeah, you gotta watch this shit, man. They did a whole documentary on sneakers and hip hop. And they were talking about this shit, man. Like, I mean. Yeah, we're from the They didn't think about Soil, man. Yo, DK Gilkuzi is amazing. I'm like, yo, this is dope. How they actually did this. It, 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 it revealed to me how important sneakers are, you know, for the whole hip hop movement. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But it's like, but it's all tied into a whole culture. It's, it's more than just superficial things, though. It goes back to us lacking, you know, something in our lives. So you kind of go back to the fashion and the style. But then again, you go way back to even the, the ancient African uh, kings who were the real true pimps back then. You know, mm -hmm. sporting the latest trend that the latest get. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go in the Bible, you find black men really sporting these latest trends, gold, bling, bling, and chains and all these things. So it's like, you can't really say it's something that started in America and it only started out of ignorance. Because you, you, you go back at it and you think, why why, why can't, like God, he said, why can't we live that way? Mm. You see what I'm saying? In a way, mm -hmm. kind of has a two-sided things. You can look at it that way. But Kankaman Samosa was blinging, man. Kankaman Samosa was in rocking slippers, man. Mm. He, was wearing, he, he was wearing the, you know, the Jordans back then. <laughs> yeah, believe me, he was wearing that shit, man. He was, mm -hmm. not, he was not walking around, you know what I mean, just begging and with ripped clothes and all of that, man. He was... He was shining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Believe me, he was rocking them things, man. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in a way, you can say, okay, yeah. Granted, I mean, Nike's making all this money off of us, but then again, it's like, all right, man. What we got to do is teach our people to, okay, let's appropriate of this consciousness. All right, now let's start a brand. Let's create this brand mm -hmm. and, and, and do what Nike, what, what Phil Knight did. You see what I'm saying? We need black Phil Knights. You see what I'm saying? We need to push forward our corporate, uh, corporation and cooperation. Mm. You see what I'm saying? This is what we got to do in terms of we can sit there and debate how ignorant that is or kind of teach our... Build our own. Yeah. As um, Diggable Planets with that album, Intercommunal Sound System. Mm -hmm. And they were preaching all of that. You know, talking about intercommunal sound system is more than just a sound system. It's actually the sound is what we're doing right now. And the system is what we're talking about. So it's like, it's more than just music. It's codified language, you see what I'm saying? It's like, when the slaves were sitting in the slave quarters, you know, practicing capoeira, capoeira was the, the hip hop mm. of that era. You see what Break I'm saying? Breakdancing. Because the white people couldn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So rap music becomes the modern day language for the slaves mm -hmm. to communicate and get mm -hmm. the idea across of how we can better ourselves, how we can change things, criticize the master per se, without the master even knowing what we are saying. Mm -hmm. See, now they're paying attention to the shit. But we had, what, it started in the 70s, they didn't know what the fuck was going on. The 80s, they had no clue until Run DMC really brought it mainstream. Mm -hmm. We had a whole decade or two 
getting this thing across, man. And they didn't know what was going on. And then they caught on. And but still, you got the underground MCs doing the same, the same thing. When people say, "Well, you're not concerned with these people killing you because of the things you're saying," I'm like, "Look, brother said you can kill a revolutionary, but you cannot kill a revolution. You yeah, can take me Hampton. out. Yep. But this shit is nonstop because mm -hmm. I'm a byproduct. I'm a product of this hip hop movement, mm -hmm. just as so many others." Mm -hmm. are after me will follow you see what I'm saying because I'm not the one who does these things hip hop will take care of the shit you know what I mean we just plant the seeds but we don't water the plant mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying hip hop does that too so it's like you can silence me shit is going on all over the world man somebody will come just like I came out of nowhere out the blue mm -hmm. and I'm here today somebody else will pop up and take care of the shit you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying but it's like like I was telling you going back to the prison system I come up here and it shocked me, I, I, you know, because I remember coming during the early 90s, I used to come for vacation, you know, I went to Yukon, so I used to come around and chill during the summertime, so I remember when Wu-Tang dropped the album, I remember actually when the video was supposed to come out, I remember that afternoon on um, Rap City, there was a room full of cats, yo, the expectation, anticipation was so enormous, about 30 guys in one room to watch this video, yo. We were waiting for like a month, yo. Oh, damn, yo. these guys, these crazy brothers, yo. They about to drop some shit. And I remember the room, what I was wearing, and everybody, I was standing. I remember everybody around me, John Prescott, my boy, this is 93, yo. Mm -hmm. This is like, what, 20 years, what, 21 years? And I still can record this shit. Mm -hmm. I remember that shit was called, everybody was like, yo, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Protect your neck, yo. It was like, it was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It was revolutionary. And then mind you, these are college students watching nine brothers from the hood now changing the whole culture. You see what I'm trying to say? And it, this was more than just and it, 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 it was, yo, I, I can't even explain it, that, that, that feeling. It was a whole generation could testify to this, yo. Like, when Wu Tang, everybody remember where you was at when that, that, that video dropped. You know what I mean? For our generation, that was like a divine moment. Mm -hmm. Early 90s. Same thing with Nas, ill matter. When that shit came, I remember that same thing with Nas, yo. We lined up outside. You talking about people fucking sleeping outside to get the album. I remember we lined up. Fuck it. It was freezing outside, but we out there, yo, we got to cop that, yo. We got to get it. And it was like Illmatic, it was like, oh my God, not shit drop. So, again, this whole consciousness, it starts from there. You see what I'm saying? What I do, going back to the prison, you take hip hop out of it, none of this shit would have happened. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't be here talking these things because my original master teachers were Pac, Red Nubian, you know what I mean, Lord Jamar, more specifically, you know, and everybody else. And the people prior to them, they were taught by Malcolm and everybody else. So it's like a whole school of thought. You see mm -hmm. what I'm, saying? I'm saying a whole bunch of things because this shit is it is. It's a whole interconnected, bunch of yeah. Yeah, it's all interconnected. It, 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 it's synergy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like I can't come and say, "Yo, this is this is it," mm -hmm. because I don't want to leave out that important aspect of really what it is. Because when I speak, I speak with passion. And it causes a lot of conflict. You see, when I talk, I, I, I talk like an MC. You see what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, an MC is not afraid of consequences regardless because I gotta tell you, I gotta speak the truth. You see, then I think of the consequences or I'll take care of it later. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand it. Like, oh, this dude is arrogant. That's the, that, that, that's the MC, yo. Mm -hmm. MC don't think of the fucking, Ego, what the fuck you talking about? Rap game, the rap game is a fucking whole ego, it's the egotistical game, yo. Mm -hmm. It's all about the male ego. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So don't don't fault me because I'm standing in the corner and I'm looking pissed. Well fucking pop looking pissed every time. Nobody mm -hmm. says shit. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's hard to talk to these people around the around the country because they try to prejudge your behavior, but they all they gotta do is understand that. The MC culture, you see. Mm -hmm. You understand the rap game, you understand the hip hop culture, then you figure me out, yo. It's like, why are you so aggressive? Because I think, like the video, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? People, it's funny when people get mad, 
uh, people get offended by things like they'll get offended if like sometimes at a meeting I swear or something like that or you say something a certain type of way you're angry about it but why aren't you offended about people dying in the cold freezing to death why aren't you offended about the little kid that can't eat or you know what I'm saying or the person that can't go to the doctor because they don't have no money why are you, why are you more offended by my words than you are by reality yeah yeah yo. you see you can understand this shit because you know where I'm coming from mm -hmm. but it's hard it's like you walk around here people stare at you yo. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, you could die in America if you do this type of shit. Yeah. You, yeah. You, don't look at, don't stare at me unless you know me, you got something to say. But here, they'll stare at your ass and, and just ask you for your fucking phone number. What's your name? I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. But see, I got to understand this is the local culture. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm struggling with this shit because you don't look at somebody unless you got fucking problems, you got business, you got something to take care of. You better handle your shit if you're going to stare at somebody. Again, I got to understand this shit though. So, Hip hop culture that I bring ain't got nothing to do with these guys here mm. because they're rappers. They don't know, they don't deal with hip hop. That's a whole, mm -hmm. that's a structure, mm -hmm. that's a culture. And the what they see probably is, is so different. Like, I, when I came out here in 2003, I was so disturbed, I was worried because when I went to Fogo, like beforehand, I, I thought poverty was why there was violence in America. And then I went into the, the villages in Fogo and I saw more poverty than I ever seen in my life. And people were so loving and so peaceful and there's so much community. I was like, wow, it ain't poverty. It's our culture that's messed up. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and then the kids over there wanted to show me videos. They, they were excited because I was from America and I, they knew I rapped. So they wanted to show me stuff. So they wanted to show me 8 Mile. And they were showing me 8 Mile. And the scene they fast forward to was a scene when someone gets shot. And, and, the con like, and being, being here in a peaceful place, for them to be excited about someone getting shot, it made me feel like sick to my stomach that that's what they were looking at that was cool. And then coming to Praia, I came to Praia two weeks later, and in Praia I saw people driving around listening to 50 Cent. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, <laughs> this is going to be trouble. This is going to be trouble. And then I, I seen a kid from Brockton, he had got deported. And he was like, oh, we're, do we're just doing the same. Like, he was excited to see me. Like, he was like, oh, he thought I was like a street dude that was doing street yeah, shit yeah, just yeah. because I'm hip hop. And he was just like, oh, we're doing the same thing. We're selling coke out here. We got little, like selling drugs to, to young girls and shit like that. And I was just like, damn, man, this, this, this peaceful place isn't going to stay the same because the influence of the culture. And I feel like hip hop culture has been turned upside down. Like, places that used to be peaceful. New Bedford didn't have murders. Yeah, when yeah, I first yeah. went out there, in 2003, shootings like all summer, and it's like hip hop culture did that. You know yeah. what I mean? Not real hip hop culture, the the hip hop, the yeah. the popular culture that they've been selling. The pop culture. The pop culture. Yeah. <laughs> they like they started promote. There was a uh, there's a uh, interview of a guy that said that he worked for a record company. He said that what happened? They called a meeting with the radio stations. And, and the record executives and it was a meeting between the radio stations and the prison system and they were talking about basically uh, promoting gangster rap and pushing gangster rap and like KRS once said it's alright gangster rap is reality there is reality that, uh, uh, stuff like that that someone's living that life alright that's your life but a lot of people I know that started rapping that shit that wasn't their life they grew up with a mom and dad that fed them every day. They didn't need to sell drugs. They could have went to college or they could have... No. <laughs> and, 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 and they just started wanting to be cool. And it's like neighborhoods got turned upside down in America. And it's like in the 60s, everybody was on a revolutionary tip. Yeah. Every, the black community was united. Uh, you know what I mean? And the music was Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Yeah. Stevie Wonder's dropping all some stuff. All, all conscious. Bla uh, I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah. And then... You know what I'm saying? Even even in, in, in the '80s, when we were growing up in the '80s, Michael Jackson, "We Are the World," uh, "Man in the Mirror," they, they don't really yeah. care about us. Yeah, Mike was dropping a lot of knowledge, and people was missing the whole shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's Sony Pro, can they don't really care about us? They don't care about us. They like to miss us in Ford, man. Black or white, even even that shit. Everything yeah. Mike was saying made sense, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything Mike was saying. Like, that's the thing too. Even before I started listening to rap music. Actually, we're doing well, what I was listening to was actually Cooling the Gang, mm. Lionel Richie, <laughs> yep. Michael, Michael Jackson, even Madonna. Mm -hmm. Even Madonna, yo, when Madonna dropped that album, Papa Don't Preach, Papa don't preach. Mm. yo, Papa Don't Preach was revolutionary, man. Because mm. I'm listening, I'm like, that's exactly what I want to tell my fucking dad, yo. <laughs> okay, stop pre 